Okay, well, I'm going to introduce you today to a really, really nifty game that's maybe really, really, really nostalgic for the 90s, um, and it's Transports. Now, for those of you familiar with games like Transport Tycoon, you'll really, really sort of get where this game came from. It, it, it feels to me like this is a true remake of the game, with just a few additional things added to make it a bit easier to play for modern audiences. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get right into it. Now, I'm going to turn the music off because, quite frankly, uh, I'm sure some people like 16-bit uh, jazz, but it's just not quite for me. So I'm going to play, and you can customise a game, you can create extra options, but I'm not going to go into that. You can try that out later on, and I will go into that in a, another tutorial. I'm going to stick to the quick start. Small hilly map, starts in the 1950s, and you're against one opponent who's set on easy. And um, there's a count of cities and industries. There's normal. And um, as you can see, what we end up here is you'll see that we're focused on a city. I'm going to skip this kind of welcome to part, and I'm going to skip the tutorial. It's not something that we really need. Now, we start here in a city or small, small city, large town. And around us, you'll find basically quite a lot of industries. Now, some of them are open already. Uh, you've got a lot of options with these. Well, not a lot, but you've got options. You can increase the production, and it's even possible later on to actually buy them out to earn more money. Uh, from your city itself, along with the industries, you'll find small towns and villages around that you can connect to. Now, early on in the game, these things are going to be very, very important for you so that you can actually earn a bit of money and they will expand as you meet their demands so for example all of these places need power such as through the power station here and as you can see this power station isn't going to start working until you give it some resources and as you can see it's not all often a perfectly straight line to these places you're going to have to twist and turn throughout to get your roads and your railways there now Long distances, it's best to actually create a rail network, small distances a road. Now, what we're going to start off with though, rather than plowing in and getting myself um, big rail networks, joining power plants up, first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get this town connected to one of the nearby villages. Now, to do that, it's dead simple. You just go and get yourself, select the road, and click on your starting road. Now you'll find as well that if you start your road sometimes not quite on the other road of the town it won't actually build properly so you'll end up with this sort of odd ending point so you have to run it from the other road. Fortunately with that it costs you more. Now I'm going to start moving this road all the way to the city. Now it's best usually to build tunnels because the problem is with inclines like these they don't always work or at least they're slow the traffic slows down they have to climb the hill okay now from that what we've got now is a road between the, the small city and the little outlying villages and towns and you know, i could carry on connecting these together to help them out i'm not going to do that yet now what you do next is you need to actually create a vehicle yard and at this point you want to pick something like a bus depot, well a vehicle depot. Right. In this you'll see that you can buy tractor units, bus and taxis. The tractor units are basically your lorries, your trucks. They can actually have um, different types of trailer actually attached to them later on. Because I'm not hauling resources yet, I don't need to, to do that. Um, nor am I going to do a bus yet, because actually I'll need to actually build bus stops in the towns and the cities. I'm going to start off with just buying a taxi. Once I bought the taxi, I go into vehicles and I can double click on it. And it will give you information about that vehicle. Uh, an overview of what it is, how old it is, the profit that it's actually made in its lifetime, the costs for running that. Whether or not it's enabled, uh, you can send it back to a depot if you need to upgrade it later on. It's got all the different things about its passenger capacities. Then it's scheduled. This is where you actually start it moving along. So 
with a taxi it's dead simple you just need to add a start and that start will be the actual towns and you see that it tells us that it's going to move between these two locations and it won't set a route it'll just take uh, the, whichever is the best route between those two points okay having a look along again we've got things like the general information so it's profit over its last time it's profit throughout the year how reliable it is and its condition so as it gets older it's going to be less reliable and poorer condition um staff uh, basically the driver <laughs> who's moving that vehicle around okay now I'm going to unpause the game and I'm just going to click on this, make sure it's all good and up and running and then I just click back on depot and start all and that's going to get this on the go and you'll see in a second the taxi will start coming out the depot and it'll start going on its route. I said I know all the graphics on this look really blocky but it's for nostalgia purposes it really is it's exactly what you would have got really in the 90s maybe just a little less pixelated and more cleaner okay now that i've got that one i'm going to move on now to actually get myself some bus routes on the go now bus terminals are really good for this you're going to get a bus terminal in your main city and then you're going to move across again and you're going to put one in your little town And then you're going to go back across to the depot and you're going to buy a bus. Head into vehicles and now you can do pretty much the same thing. Create a schedule for it. You click on the bus stop, not the actual town. And there we go. If you want to put extra bus stops in along the way, feel free to. But when it's this size, you don't really need to do it that much. Uh, Particularly as well when it's intercity buses, so buses that go outside the main city and to other towns and cities because you don't want it stopping too many times. Keep your bus stops for ones that are going to travel around, say, a big township or a big city later on in a circular. Okay, uh, back again. Depot and start that vehicle. And off we go. Right. We've now started earning money. This is the main thing now. We've not got a lot of money coming in, but we've at least got something to earn us a bit of profit while we're building up. Okay, now we need to decide what we're going to do as far as power supplies are concerned because we've got an oil field here and we've got a power plant here. We've also got a coal here and a coal mine over here. Now, for us to decide which one of these we're actually going to power up first, We've got to go back to our main city and we've actually got to find out where it actually gets its power from, from here. Clicking on, and as we can see, right there, it's our coal plant. And that is the one that we need to get up and running as quickly as possible. Again, we've got a couple of options here. We can do a train line between these two points. Now, trains in the 1950s here, they're quite slow. They're not fast trains and they don't have a massive capacity. Whereas actually, if you wanted to do a road network, you could just get loads and loads and loads and loads of trucks to do it quickly. And you'll earn loads of profit for every single one. So as much as trains look really, really nice, I'm going to stick to roads for now. And that also means that I can take advantage of those roads later on. So straight here, straight from the coal, I'm going to start drawing in. Now, I can go across rivers and it'll draw a bridge. But just remember, it's a bit more expensive to actually do that. And then I'm going to carry on around. And one of the other problems you get is it's really easy by accident to miss where you're taking this thing. And there we go, straight past the coal. Also, that road though has given me a few other advantages because if I want to, I could easily draw a road from there to there. And again, across and into this next town. And later on, I'll just build a bus route and taxi routes between these. I'm just basically going to take advantage of building the roads. So, I'm going to, I could save myself for money and use this depot here to actually fund, uh, to actually buy the trucks for the coal plant. But I'm going to actually create a new one 
just so it's easier to have my taxis and buses for these towns and the lorries for here to be closer to, to the depot. Okay, so tractor units. I'm going to buy one, two, three, four, five. That might seem very, very excessive, uh, but trust me, it's not. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll come back to these in a second because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some depots in. So, loading stations. One at the coal plant and one up here at the power. You can even put two of these next to each other to complete it, uh, particularly if you've got a lot of vehicles going in. Having two, it creates a single stop but it just kind of makes it bigger and have higher capacity. That's good for train stations later on as well. But train stations really benefit from having multiple platforms. Uh, for now, I don't need that. Okay, so back here, add a trailer. Um, because it's going to be a coal, just like, I'll buy a coal trailer. And um, as you can see, it's now, this vehicle has now got a coal. And the trailer for this one, by, by, I could have made my life easier as well actually. When I created one, I could have just made a copy of it, strangely enough, but uh, I've done it the long way. Okay, and now I want to get all these on the go, so. And then adjust the timetable and it stops. So I need this one to go there and to here. And then same with all of these. I said I should have, in all honesty, just uh, made one and then copied it, but that was me being uh, in too much of a hurry, quite frankly. So, any minute now I'll have all of these done. And there we are, and I'll start them all. And this is great, what will start happening now, you'll start seeing these trucks all start coming out. They'll start heading down the road. They'll go all the way here, and they'll end up at the coal mine. From the coal mine, they'll take power to the coal plant. And shortly afterwards, you will actually see the power plant activate and it'll start meeting individual needs of individual cities. And unfortunately, there's not many speed options on this game, so it is kind of like a waiting game. It, it's, a, it's a game for patience, quite frankly. Right, while they're doing that, I'm just going to, obviously, going to go back over to this depot. I'm going to buy a taxi. And then I'm going to take advantage of the road I've built. So basically, using the fact that I pretty much had a road there anyway. And again, I'm going to start that taxi. Get it on the go, and that's going to start going between those towns. As you can see, my trucks are on the way now. So just keep using the roads as best as you can, optimise, keep reducing the number of roads you create. And then, here we go. You can see now it's started to generate energy. Which means, the cities and the towns in the immediate area are starting to build up the power. That's one of their needs met, and they're going to be happy with you for doing that. They're going to be satisfied going to light your transport company and use it more. Everything you do for that city will improve your likability. Uh, same with delivering its mail, its goods, its general goods, its getting food, water, luxury goods, fuel and everything. Yeah. You can see this place has a sewage plant that it uses. Again, what we can do is we can utilise it, we can use that, we can take sewage, strangely enough, from anywhere in the area move it to the water plant and then that water plant can then supply water to here and we can move the sewage around. There's even little uh, interesting little alerts that happen now and then such as fires uh, which of course we know there are a lot more disasters hitting but just be mindful of them. Okay so there we go, there's a basic introduction to transport. 
I really like this game. I can play it for absolutely hours. I really could. Um, and I believe there's a lot of richness to it. And I, I kind of feel, though, I don't like to promote that you buy anything. You know, I really feel that this kind of game needs supporting. Okay, then. Thanks very much. Uh, if you like what you see and you want me to do more of these kind of videos to show you how to use transports and how to do good road layouts, then like and subscribe and tell me what you think in the comment section below. Thanks very much.